Thanks, John. Well, he is the $6 million man this morning. Supporters of Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul raised a record-breaking sum for his campaign in a single day. It was on the anniversary of the Boston Tea Party, and it's not the first time last month's 24-hour money bomb detonated uh, to the tune of $4.2 million. Can he translate those dollars, though, to votes? Congressman Ron Paul joins me now from the campaign trail in Des Moines. Great to see you this morning. Thanks for being with us, Congressman. Thank, thank you. Nice to be with you. Well, so we haven't seen this record broken. I think it was after uh, John Kerry in 2004 won already the Democratic nomination that he raised uh, slightly less than the amount you raised in one day. The polling, though, still has you at about 6% of registered Republicans. Those are the ones who say they would vote for you in the primary. There's our CNN poll. How do you translate that money into more success in the polls? Well, you got to spend the money and get the vote out, and that will be a challenge, but we also have to consider the fact that the polls might not be exactly accurate, because we appeal to a lot of independent voters and disgruntled Republicans, Republicans who have dropped out, who might not have voted in the last go-around, so they're not being polled. We also attract a lot of young people who have not voted before, and they they are energizing the campaign, so they won't have been called, and a lot of them have cell phones anyway. So I, I think the poll numbers aren't completely accurate, but uh, there's no reason for us to think that uh, this is going to be an easy thing to do. We have to take that money and do the conventional things and advertise and get the vote out, and uh, that is what we're doing right now. When you, when you say it's not completely accurate, what, do you anticipate that you'd be in double digits uh, if people came out to vote? Do you think you'd be one of the leading candidates in some of these states? Well, it's real hard to say, but I would say we're doing a lot better. I wouldn't be saying that we know that we're in first or second, but I'll bet we're a lot better than they claim we are, uh, because where's the enthusiasm coming from? We, we had 57,000 people donate uh, on Sunday, and 25,000 were brand new, so there's something very significant going on, and I don't think anybody quite has uh, understood this, but uh, the people are very unhappy in this country, and uh, they're, they're going to be voting differently this time, and that's what this uh, message is telling us. I mean, this is uh, pr pretty unbelievable because, you know, on Sunday uh, we raised the six million plus, but the next day it seems like people just couldn't even get on this Sunday. We raised another $500,000, and this doesn't cost us anything. You know, we right. don't pay commissions. Well, let me ask you about, I just want to ask you about this, though. How do you then translate that to this uh, well-oiled machine that needs to be up and running in all of the precincts and all of these uh, in all of these uh, main early states like Iowa, like New Hampshire. You know, for example, we have Trevor Lyman. He is the man behind some of your fundraising, in fact, being credited with the big fundraising blitz. He's a 37-year-old music promoter, no political experience, and as you said, has never voted before. How do you fold him in officially to your campaign so that you guys can, uh, can get, a, get a machine up and working in some of these places? Well, there are a lot of people just like him, but they've already registered, and uh, they're not being polled, and they are working hard, and they're donating money. And uh, the, the final answer has to be in the, po you know, in the final vote, in the primary. Are you so, going to add him officially to your campaign? Well, you know, I've only talked to him, uh, I think, just once. I don't know him, and he's just dedicated to the views that we express in the Constitution. So, no, there hasn't been any talk about him becoming an official a member of the campaign, but he's an official member of this group of people who are disgusted with what's happening right. in this country, and he's just one of millions, I am convinced. Let me ask you about this then, because so many of your views and a lot of your campaign is generating support outside of the mainstream, uh, would you consider running as an independent? I haven't uh, considered that. I have no plans on doing this, and we have this money, we have this momentum. It's so early, we haven't had one vote. So I have no intention of doing that. Why not, though? Why do you want to, a lot of your uh, views are very divergent from the Republican Party and, and, and from the uh, voters that traditionally the Republican Party picks from uh, to gain momentum. Why not consider it an independent run? Well, because I think uh, I've been a Republican all my life. I've been elected 10 times. I think the Republican Party used to stand for fiscal conservatism. They used to believe in the Constitution. They used to believe in a humble foreign policy. They used to be believe in getting rid of the Department of Education. I would say that uh, maybe the Republicans uh, that are running right now don't fit the Republican mold, and I do. Before I let you go, by the way, you talked about foreign policy. Uh, there's an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal that says it's because of your, uh, pro your foreign policy that makes you a non-serious candidate in today's terror world, that it really is uh, your non-interventionist that is going to work against you in terms of getting votes. Do you agree? Yeah. 
Exactly the opposite is true, because if you don't understand what I'm talking about, terrorism will get worse. Because terrorists come here because we occupy those foreign countries. They don't come here because we're free and prosperous. And if we don't understand that, we can't solve it. But when we invade foreign countries, impose our will on them, and tell them that we're going to tell them how to live, and they see us attacking their religion and stealing their oil, there's always going to be a few radicals who will be willing to commit suicide terrorism against us. If we don't understand that, we cannot solve it. So I say, I have the answers. They're confused. If they don't change, terrorism is going to continue. Congressman Ron Paul, Republican presidential candidate, thanks for talking with us this morning. Thank you. He has such incredible grassroots support. I, I, sure I does. came into Penn Station last night in the train, and literally at every entrance were Ron Paul supporters out there trying to spread the good word. Yeah, and anecdotally speaking, anytime we have a political quick vote question, it has anything to do with Ron Paul. His <laughs> viewers vote early and often because. Yeah. Uh,